What is up guys, Sergeant Arger right here, and today we're going to be reacting to the Invasion of Italy, and after this guys we're going to be reacting to, like, this one request that I got, I forgot the exact title, but yeah, I'll be doing that, um, and yeah, the Invasion of Italy, 1943-1944, did a video similar about this earlier, ow, what the heck, but this time it's different, so, yeah, we're going to be splitting this into two parts since it's a long video. Imagine a website where you can browse a map of the world depicting in any time period in history. The second oh, armchair has video. Wait. Library proposed by Prime Minister Winston Churchill and the British Chiefs of Staff Wait, what was proposed by your first month. Is on the Hi, I'm Griffin Johnson, the Armchair Historian. Today's video is on the amphibious invasion of Sicily. When the plan was first proposed by Prime Minister Winston Churchill and the British Chiefs of Staff, it was met with astonishment. This was the first large-scale offensive operation aimed at the European mainland since the fall of France in 1940. And despite the Axis losing hundreds of thousands of troops in its last stand in North Africa, they were far from beaten. Supplies in the Mediterranean theater were scarce, and the idea of a new, large- Yeah, it's so crazy how fast, like, North Africa was a loss for them. Like, it's just, you know, the status quo, Britain and Italy fighting, and then all of a sudden, all of- at all of Africa is just swept over instantly. It is crazy. Scale offensive seemed ludicrous to many. American generals naturally argued that an invasion of Italy at this time would draw resources away from cross-channel operations into France, something that the Soviets had been demanding for months. Debate raged throughout the two-week conference at Casablanca, with Churchill's stirring rhetoric about Italy being the soft underbelly of Europe eventually persuading the Americans to consider his proposal. Thus, Operation Husky was born, a large-scale amphibious invasion Aren't they showing it with hearts of iron from North Africa to the island of Sicily, which could be used as a springboard for a subsequent attack on mainland Italy. General Dwight D. Eisenhower was appointed supreme. The Americans eventually agreed to launch Husky at the Washington conference after repeated assertions that the invasion would not delay preparations for B-Day. Commander of Operation Husky, but planning remained primarily in the hands of British General Harold Alexander. General Alexander's plan of attack was simple, land on the southern tip of Sicily and capture the large port of Syracuse, then drive north to cut off an Axis retreat at Messina, which was also a logistical staging point for any future invasion of Italy. The British would take center stage in the assault, with the American forces operating in a supporting role, something they weren't particularly happy about. To reach Syracuse, the Allies would need to cross the Ponte Grande Bridge over the River Anaco. But given its strategic importance, the Italians undoubtedly prepared to destroy the bridge at first sign of invasion. Left with no other options, General Alexander authorized a risky airborne operation to capture the bridge ahead of the main invasion. On the night of July 9th, 1943, a large formation of gliders and transport planes entered Axis airspace over the Isle of Sicily. But with winds gustling at over 45 miles or 72 oh, wow. kilometers an hour, the ambitious airborne assault quickly turned into a confused mess. Anti-aircraft batteries and searchlights added to the chaos, leading to 65 of the 147 gliders being released prematurely by their towing aircraft, many of which plunged straight into the ocean. Of the remainder, only 12 landed near their objectives, and the rest were scattered far and wide across the Sicilian countryside. Oh no, it Had the crashed. Axis forces been better prepared, Operation Husky might now be considered one of the biggest disasters of the Second World War. But many factors transpired to give the Allies an easier time than they arguably deserved. 
Sicily was defended by the entire Italian 6th Army, backed up by several German divisions, amounting wow. to over 300,000 men, accompanied by... Then how did it get taken? There's 300,000 on that small little island. How did it get taken? ...by several hundred tanks and over a thousand aircraft. Oh my god. But Italian morale thousand? was at an all-time low, following the loss of North Africa, and the bulk of the 6th Army was made up of... ...coastal and support divisions that had minimal combat experience and little incentive to stand and fight. Furthermore, senior Italian general Alfredo Guzzani and German field marshal Albert Kesselring were constantly at odds over every detail of the defense. Thanks to this bickering and the loss of North Africa, the remaining German soldiers in Sicily had grown to despise their Italian counterparts and now refused to coordinate with them. The tentative nature of the Axis hold on Sicily was plainly illustrated when a ragged group of 50 British paratroopers made their way to Ponte Grande Bridge after scrounging up a meager handful of supplies. With no expectations of success, the men fired off a few half-hearted volleys at the entrenched defenders, only to watch in astonishment as the terrified Italians leapt from their bunkers and vanished into the night. Scenes like this were repeated across the island, with paratroopers causing havoc by cutting telephone wires, intercepting message couriers, and attacking isolated coastal batteries. What? As the next day dawned, a fleet of transport ships made a daring rush through high seas towards the Sicilian coastline. Lining their decks were the men of the U.S. 7th Army under George Patton and the British 8th Army under Bernard Montgomery. Once again, the treacherous winds and natural obstacles such as offshore sandbars were as dangerous as enemy fire, with several landing ships running aground or finding themselves blown helplessly off course. However, as previously stated, enemy resistance was remarkably light, with no significant force awaiting the Allies on the beaches. With no tanks or mobile infantry divisions to contest the landings, the static defenses proved only temporary inconveniences. When the confused and dispirited Italian forces finally began to mobilize for a counterattack on the beachheads, they were easily repulsed by naval gunfire. With approximately 53,000 men put ashore in the first wave, the Allies began their advance inland. Although Puente Grande Bridge had already been recaptured by the Italians, the paratroopers held it long enough to delay the Axis forces to destroy it, and Syracuse fell within a day. By the 12th, much of southern Sicily was in Allied hands. The Luftwaffe was being suppressed by strategic bombing raids, and many Allied officers were already preparing to celebrate a swift victory. But then, disaster almost struck when the British attempted a second major airborne operation to capture a bridge over the river Cemento, which blocked their northern advance towards the city of Catania. While the initial attack was successful, the bridge was deep behind enemy lines, and the isolated paratroopers had to hold out for three whole days before ground units could relieve them. How did they not die? Even after the bridge was secured, fierce Italian resistance stalled the advance into the northern half of the island for another week. Sicily would not be an easy victory after all. With del well, they took it fairly quickly. Blaze mounting, friction developed between the two halves of the invasion force. The American 7th Army had been intended to provide support from the flanks, but was otherwise expected to hang back while the British 8th Army did most of the fighting. To say this situation was not to General Patton's liking would be a vast understatement. So he began badgering General Alexander for permission to break out to the western side of the island. Unable to endure Patton's pestering, Alexander reluctantly mumbled that Patton could conduct a limited reconnaissance. Dang, these animations are getting better and better. Seriously, look at this. Transmission. Naturally, Patton interpreted this as permission to charge the entire 7th Army west at breakneck speed, leaving Montgomery to continue trudging north in the face of increasingly stiff enemy resistance. While Patton was busy crushing the remnants of the Italian army stationed in western Sicily, Field Marshal Kesselring was preparing his final defensive line in the mountainous terrain south of Messina. This was known as the Etna Line, as it included the giant volcano Mount Etna as one of its key defensive components. Both sides knew that whoever controlled the mountain slopes could decide the course of the battle, and fighting in the area was intense. Oh. Montgomery planned to capture the town of Adrano, which linked the two halves of the Etna Line together around the base of the volcano. 
But Adreno was still well behind enemy lines, and to get there, the Allies had to battle their way through some of the harshest terrain since the deserts of North Africa. The first major clash on the road to Mount Etna occurred at the town of Chenturipe, situated atop a line of extremely steep hills that gave a commanding view of the surrounding countryside and provided a nearly impregnable defensive position for the elite German Fallschirmjäger. Impregnable definition. Of a fortified position, unable to be captured or broken into it. Okay. Also, sorry I'm not reacting that much. I don't know why. It's just like, I don't know. It's sort of like a movie, you know? Where paratrooper regiment stationed Man, why can't I hear there. It? Are you serious right now? Okay, there you go. What is going on right now? Oops. Okay. And Falschermaker, or paratrooper regiment, stationed there. On August 2nd, a heavy artillery barrage managed to destroy or dislodge the defenders from several of their hilltop fortifications. But Chen Turipe itself remained defiant. Left with no other choice, the men of the British 78th Infantry Division pushed forwards across broken, rocky terrain, constantly being hit by mortar fire and German snipers. Wow. Entering the town, the battered infantrymen found themselves confronted by a pair of Panzer III's that had been hidden in the narrow streets. With no armored support of their own, the men of the 78th played hide-and-seek with these deadly opponents, finally surrounding and destroying them with Piat anti-tank weapons. They Yet even them? without their tanks, the outnumbered false Schenbjägers held out for two whole days. As the British were sweating up the steep hills around Shen Turipe, General Patton had finished rolling up the western half of Sicily and was now assaulting the town of Tronia, which was also part of the Etna Line. Once again, the extreme terrain made for a difficult advance, with extensive minefields making the unsteady ground even more treacherous. To Patton's great annoyance, his forces were unable to achieve any easy breakthroughs and had to settle into an arduous routine of slowly prying the enemy off their fortified hilltops one by one. The German and Italian forces were not content to simply well, hold the line either, the launching line. numerous counterattacks that often Thank managed to regain ground and reoccupy old positions. The assault on Tronia lasted until August 6th. And just like Chen Turipe, the Allies were unable to prevent the Germans from making an orderly withdrawal. That same day, Adrino was occupied by the 78th Division. And just like that, the Etna line was finally broken. Oh, and the wow. end of the campaign and was... There's... Everyone is retreating. Well, okay, in sight. In fact, Axis forces were already in the process of evacuating from Sicily. Castle Ring was under mm. no illusions about his chances of holding the island for much longer, and had little reason to stand and fight after the loss of Catania and its airfields on the 5th. Beginning on August 11th, a massive fleet of transport ships assembled at the port of Messina, right at the northern tip of Sicily, with rear guard. Whatever happens to like. The people of these occupied countries, though, like what, like what do the people of occupied Italy do? Of Sicily, I mean, do they just go about their normal lives. Like, how does how does the government work and stuff? Guard units delaying the Allied advance. More than one hundred thousand German and Italian soldiers were able to cross the Straits of Messina and escape into Italy. Despite the fierce fighting. The battle for Sicily had been a remarkably bloodless affair. Of the nearly 500,000 Allied soldiers involved, what? 500,000? That is a lot for an island that's small. Only 1% were killed in action. Dang. 1%? That's like. 5,000. The Germans lost about 26,000 men, with 10,000 taken captive and the rest wow. killed or wounded. Almost the entire Italian 6th Army surrendered, and 100,000 men became prisoners of war. The what? invasion also convinced... What is th that is a lot! ...Italy's Grand Council of Fascism to capitulate, and by the middle of July, they voted Mussolini out of power and began seeking terms of surrender. For an instant, it seemed as if Churchill had been correct. Yeah, and that was the one thing, like, Italy may have been the dictator of Italy, but he sort of had to, like, make a deal with the king. Like, the king still had power, though. 
He had the power to force Mussolini to retire, I think. I think he made, like, some kind of deal whenever he got into power or something like that. I don't remember completely. But yeah, it's interesting. And the soft underbelly of Europe was about to be laid open with a single decisive strike. But instead, the Allies had unknown- Yeah, but the Germans, they were like, oh, there's a situation here. And then they moved a bunch of divisions. And then they reoccupied Italy. And then and then they created another government. And then Mussolini was the leader of that one. And like the Ger their, the Germans controlled them. Knowingly committed themselves to an agonizing slog up the Italian yeah. peninsula. It was like a bunch of mountains and rivers, and they would constantly make these fortifications on these lo defensive lines, and the Allies would have to like Spend a few months to pass the line, they would go up a little bit, go to another line. It, it was sort of like World War One, a little bit. Where thousands of lives would be wasted in pursuit of a quick victory that would never materialize. Join us next time when we take a look at this final campaign in Italy, which lasted right up until the final Axis surrender in May of 1945. Oh wait, we already reacted to this one. So, I think that's all we need to react to then. This was the prequel to that other one! Oh, okay. Well that's, anyways, that's cool that we reacted to that. Now we have the full story. Um, we should have reacted to it before though, but that's fine. Thank you all for watching everyone, and I don't know how I'm gonna name this, or do it, I don't know what I'm gonna do. But yeah, thank you all for watching, and goodbye. Hello everyone, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. And you know, turn on the notification bell thingy. And if you didn't, then make sure to leave a uh, thumbs down. But yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. And while you're at it, go ahead and watch my other videos. They're probably just as good, and if not better, than this one right now. Except for my oldest videos, don't watch those. And, you know, subscribe to these people down here, my fellow sergeants. They're other YouTubers that I either know or I have in high regards. Yeah, even my cat agrees. So, thank you for watching and have a great day.